I'm just going to share my screen. Thank you. Can you please let me know if you can see my screen? Yeah, we can. Yes, we can. You can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. We can yes. see. Okay, um, let me just put it in presentation mode. And we can start. Beginning. All right, cool. You can still see it, right? <clears throat> Yes, yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let's get started. Um, good evening again, and thanks everyone for joining. I think this is a good number, 29 of you. I'm not sure if there are any other BAs that you know that should be in this session. If you do, uh, it would be nice to reach out to them, send them a quick uh, message to say uh, we've started. Because, I mean, it's usually better to be in an interactive class where you can ask questions. I mean, um, you can go back and watch, but you'd also appreciate the fact that there will not be any opportunity to ask questions, isn't it? So, yeah, if you <clears throat> anybody that should be here and isn't, you could reach out to them. Right. So, what we're talking about today... <clears throat> creation of user stories and acceptance criteria so obviously as the, sorry there's somebody that's unmuted please and i can't see because i'm just using one screen please can you mute but let me see if i can find the question that would be Olua Kemi. thank you um, it, it's good for us to get into the practice, right, of joining meetings and making sure that we are on a uh, mute. Because, I mean, as we all know, uh, nowadays, like, you would be having most meetings um, on Teams or whatever other platform you, the organization you're working in will be using. So it's good practice, you know, to start, um, you know, um, doing this now, just so it's part of you. Okay, so today... We're going to be um, focusing on epics, features, user stories, and acceptance criteria. So as BAs, this will form a major part of the tasks that you would do, you know, maybe on a daily basis. And it might not even be on a daily basis, but as part of your work within a project, you know. Uh, we know that um, as BAs, we kind of see ourselves as the middle, would I say middle man between you know, the business and IT. So what does that mean? Like you are um, kind of representing the business. First of all, um, eliciting requests from the business, trying to find out what's the problem, um, where are you now, where do you want to be, you know, carry out a bit of gap analysis, establish what the business needs and requirements are, and then you want to document them. How would you document these needs and requirements? You do that using your user stories and um, your acceptance criteria. These are the ways that you would communicate those requirements to the development team. Development team is made up of your um your testers and your developers. So they are the ones that have the experience, the technical know-how to bring those um, requirements to life, right? So we capture them, we document them, and we convey that message, you know, in a way that's easily understood to the development team. And with that, they can kind of run with the vision, if you get what I mean. So they bring those visions or dreams to, yeah, visions, let's not say dreams, visions to life, okay, to reality. Um, just a second, right, okay, cool. Um, so moving on, so I've already said we're going to be talking about epics, features, user stories, and um, acceptance criteria. Right, so let's get started. What is an epic? So what you can see on your screen, it says an epic is a high-level body of work that bands together a group of related stories. They're large pieces of work that can be broken down into smaller and more manageable work items, tasks, or user story. <laughs> They're used to describe more complex tasks and create a clear hierarchy that makes it easier to manage development and help deliver new value to the users while working towards a bigger goal. I'm sure some, some people might be saying, oh gosh, this is big grammar and everything. Um, but simply put, an epic is a collection of, it's a high level body of work, right? That you can break down to smaller chunks, 
right? As we go on in this session, you will begin to understand the position of an epic and what it can be broken down into. But at this point, all you need to know is like the epic, will I say is like the highest level of, of work. Like if you are relating with them, um, management or the business you'll be you'll be talking or um at epic level most of the time because they wouldn't really want to know the nitty-gritty or all the things that go behind the scenes or uh, all the other smaller bits of work that kind of make up that big epic so the epic is almost like um the overall goal and then other uh, pieces of work derive the, um from that epic okay so for a more complex task can be classified as an epic or a, a task that's high up in the hierarchy okay and it says uh, it helps to manage development and deliver value to the users while working towards uh, a bigger goal <clears throat> right now features so we said we'll talk about epics features user stories and a certain criteria isn't it so we're just doing the definitions just now Features, what are features? A feature is a service or function of the product that delivers business value and fulfills the customer's need. That kind of sounds really vague, right? Because even the Epic can deliver business value. But if you go to the second paragraph, it says Epics are broken down into features, okay? So remember, I said, I'm going to be going back and forth just to make sure we, we understand. Remember I said that an Epic is a high-level body of work? Right. And further down in the first paragraph, it says it can be broken down into smaller and more manageable work items, tasks or user stories. Here you have it that an epic can be broken down into features. So if you're looking at a hierarchy, you can say the epic is right at the top and then the feature goes next. OK, it's a chunk of work from the epic, a deliverable that adds value and moves towards completing the epic. So you can look at, uh, look at it as this. One epic can be broken down into a number of features. When all those features are completed, what does it do? It, it adds val value and moves towards completing the epic. So as you're completing each feature, your epic is getting completed. The moment all features are completed, it means what? That your epic is complete. I'm hoping we understand so far. So epics broken down into features. So simply put, the epic is a larger piece of work and it can be broken down into a number of features okay right so user stories these are short simple descriptions of a feature told from the perspective of the person who desires the new capability usually a user or customer of the system i would like us to pay close attention to that definition especially the one around the perspective you know it says it's a user story so if you want to really simplify it, what you say is a story by a user, isn't it? And that's why it says uh, it's told from the perspective of the person who desires the new capability, usually a user or customer of the system. Now, we, we're saying that it's told from the perspective of the person or the perspective of a user. However, as a business analyst, you aren't necessarily the user of the system, are you? Remember we said that as a business analyst, you are standing, let's use the word in the gap, or you are the bridge, um, you are the you are bridging the gap, right, between the business and IT solutions and all whatnot, right? So you are not necessarily the user. In fact, in most cases, you are not the user of that solution. You are not the user of the system. However, you will be representing, please do not forget, you'll be representing the user so you would view everything from the user's perspective. So you're kind of an advocate for um, the user. So when you're writing your user stories, it must be written as if you are the user. And um, when we get to user stories, you will see um, examples of this, and I think it will throw more light on what I'm trying to explain. Um, right. Sorry, some grammatical <laughs> error here. Uh, user stories talk. Oh gosh. Do you know? I feel like going back to correct this now. <laughs> um, I'm going to do it actually. Just a second. Um, so <clears throat> at this point, I would ask if we've got any questions so far. We've talked about um, epics and we've talked about features. Um, any question at the moment relating to that? Ask at least one question to buy me time to make this correction, please. All right. 
stories talk about okay so i would assume that we are fine so far which is good all right i'm going to share again uh let's see can you see my screen now <laughs> or do i have to share again not yet not yet right okay so just a second i think i need to stop the <clears throat> slideshow and do the sharing thing again I think Someone has some features. I don't know if you can get. I don't know if you can get examples. Uh -uh. You are um putting the what they say is it the card before the, <laughs> the horse before the card before the horse. I did mention if you remember that I was going to give us examples. So don't worry, you see examples, okay? Uh -huh. Yeah, you see examples. So for current slide, okay, right. So we are back. I hope you can all hear me. I mean, um, everything is at the loudest just now um, on my system. And I'm actually you known for being really loud, so I'm not sure why people are struggling to hear me. Okay. <clears throat> Where were we? Okay, so user stories. So we were saying before I, before I, I stopped, that there are short, simple descriptions of a feature told from the perspective of the person who desires the new capability, usually a user or customer of the system. And then I mentioned that we should pay particular attention that the, the, the stories are written. Sorry, there's somebody that's un, unmuted and it's interfering. Let me find out. Adekunle, please, can you, all these are factors that might be contributing to why people can hear me. And it's a humming or buzzing sound. Adekunle, please, can you mute? Adekunle Dairo, please. <clears throat> yes, you said what? Can you please mute yourself? Of the person who desires the new capability, usually a user or customer of the system. So very important. You are writing the user story. You are not necessarily the user, but you will write it as if you were or are the user. Now, user stories <laughs> user stories talk about um, how a particular bit of feature will offer something of value. So when I show you an example, you will understand what this means. It kind of goes to show you what value you will you will get from completing the work on the user stories. Okay, why do we write user stories? The main aim is to put end users in the center of the conversation and capture product functionality from their perspective. Again, you see that word perspective is being mentioned, right? Um, you want to put them at the center of the converse, uh, conversation. Why is that the case? Can you imagine making a product or developing uh, a piece of software that's going to be used by a number of a group of people and in the end, it's not fit for purpose? They say, well, this is not what we asked for or it doesn't quite meet our needs. At the end of the day, it's a pointless exercise, isn't it? So you want to be sure that um, whatever it is that you are um, creating or producing that is going to be fit for purpose is, is is developed or created with the user in mind because they are the ones that are going to to use it. They are the end users, right? Um, and it it helps developers get a better understanding of what, for whom, and why they are building. So when you see the the way a user story is laid out, it helps developers to understand what they're building or developing and who they are doing it for and most importantly why why they are building it so it kind of puts it's quite important because it, it, it kind of helps everybody to be on the same um what how they say it now on the same page right in terms of their understanding and what they're working towards right more on the benefits of user stories they focus on the user and their needs. We've said that um, before. They allow for equal amount of understanding and collaboration. That's what I just said. So everybody's on the same page. We understand what we want to do and it helps us to work together. We can own it and work together. It also drives creative solutions. Driving creative solutions, this can happen when you're having like your refinement meetings. 
um, I know you people must have talked about um scrum ceremonies and all that. So like when you're having your refinement meetings, um, it's an opportunity for the whole team to look at those user stories. Is there anything they can add to it? Is there anything they can remove that will aid the understanding or aid a better understanding of the goal, right? And by so doing, people become creative and they they begin to suggest, you know, okay, we can we can change this, we can add that, we can remove this, you know, or this is how we can achieve what we want to achieve. So they help in driving creative solutions. Now, what is a good user story? <clears throat> a good user story should be written based on the invest criteria. I'll say that again. A good user story should be written based on the invest criteria. What's the invest criteria? If you notice, I've listed a number of points. I think there's six of them. Independent, negotiable, valuable, estimable, small, and testable. Um, if you also look closely, you see that it spells the word, or they spell the word invest, I-N-V-E-S-T, right? And, and the they have been capitalized. So the first letters have been capitalized and they, if you put them together, it reads invest. So a good user story must have, must follow this criteria, okay? And I'm going to explain what we mean by all this, um, 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 by the different points on the criteria. Independent. <clears throat> it means that the story should be, they should be freely re reordered, you know, in, in such a way that there's no dependency, right? So you you want to make sure that when you put, I don't know if you guys have heard of your product backlog. I'm sure you have from yesterday, but if not, I will show you when we come to the practical um aspect um, this evening. So you want to order your stories in your product backlog so that um how will I put it now? So they're not they're independent, they stand alone. And if there's any dependency, right, you you make sure that you clear out the ones that. Um, other stories rely on. Okay, let me try and explain because I can see how this might be confusing. So, if you are thinking about your alphabets, right? A is before B or no, maybe the alphabet is not a good um, thingy. Right. So, if you just uh, let me create a picture in your head. <clears throat> if you want to get into a building, you first of all bring out your set of keys, isn't it? And then you put it into the keyhole, turn it before you can get, gain an um, entrance or access into the building, isn't it? Now, if we want to separate this um, whole action into three user stories. The first one is what? Bring out your key from your pocket. The second one is what? Uh, insert key into keyhole. The third one is what? Turn the knob to gain access into the building, right? So th those are three steps. Now, on your product backlog, you know your product backlog, it kind of lists things, um, it lists the different tasks or user stories that, you know, you the team wants to cover or develop. If I go and put turn the knob, and gain uh, access as my first user story. And then I put the second one as a uh, retrieve key from pocket. And then the third one is um, insert key into keyhole. Can you see how I've not put them in the right order? Because the second um, step is dependent on the first and the third is dependent on the second, isn't it? So I first have to bring out the retrieve the key from my pocket before I insert the key into the keyhole before I turn the door knob to gain access. Do we understand that? So in your product backlog, you want to order your users to you want to arrange them in order of them. Will I say dependence? So some stories are dependent on others, right? So you want to make sure that if there's any that's dependent, it's if it's dependent on something else, that something else is done before you move to the next one. Okay. So the next point is negotiable. So uh, like we, we said, um, what the purpose, when we're talking about the purposes of um, user stories, we said that it, it drives creative um, thinking, you know, and uh, creative solutions, and it helps everyone to be on the same page, to have that shared understanding. What does that, and I, I also said that um, when you're doing your refinement, it's an opportunity to add or remove to the user story or maybe the acceptance criteria. Why is that the case? Or what does that mean? It means that the user story is negotiable. What does this mean? It's not set in stone. It's not like a script that's given by the BA to say, this is the gospel, um, run with it. Uh, uh, you cannot add to it. You cannot take away from, from it. That's not the case. It is negotiable. So when you come with your user story, remember we said 
you are trying to document the customer's requirements in a way that is easily understood by the development team, right? Now, if how what what of this scenario you come with a story and the development team don't really get what you're trying to say, right? And they understand one thing, they tell you, and you're like, no, that's not quite what I was um referring to. And everyone starts to, you know, like, okay, this is what we would like to see, if that is the meaning, you know, you're trying to pass on to us, right? So it's negotiable. We can add some more to it. We can take away from it. As we go on, you will see what I'm trying to um, 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 describe. So it's negotiable, all right? It gives room for discussion, okay? It's a reminder to have a conversation. And in that conversation, the team negotiates the concrete solution, right? So the story can be enhanced or rewritten. That's the point. Doesn't mean that business analysis comes and says, that is it, uh, my way or the highway. It's negotiable, right? So it, uh, it opens up conversations. The next word there is valuable. This means that each user story adds something useful for the end user or customer. All right. When again, when I show you an example of the user story, you will see what what this means. Every user story must show the value that will be added to the end user or customer. Okay, so it can um, lead to increments, you know, or um, so it can lead to increments. So you can see how um, once the user story has been worked on and completed, it will add value to to the end user. Okay. Um, estimable. Now, <clears throat> the way you must write your user story it will be in such a way that it can be estimated. So, um, again, when you are having your um refinement, the developers and testers will have to estimate the the efforts right that will be put in to develop or create that piece of work. Now, if you cannot estimate it, you have to. Be, if you cannot estimate it properly, you you have to break it into smaller pieces because it has to be, um, small small enough to understand. Uh, see this this point ties in with the next one, the small. So let me just talk about the two, now because smaller stories are easier to estimate and test. Right, when you write a user story and it's too big, and it's now getting to like an epic. It might not fit within a sprint. So user story must be small enough to fit into a sprint. Now, I'm not sure how how many weeks have you agreed that your sprint would be? Can somebody just quickly answer me? Two weeks, guys. Two weeks, right? Two weeks. Okay. So your user stories have to be small enough that they can be developed within two weeks. Okay, now if they're small enough, it will make it easier to estimate. Because when they are too big, your estimates will be off. It will be way off, and you find out that you've not finished the um, you've not finished the story. You're carrying it over into a new sprint. But if you've done your um work well and your user story is small enough, it'll be easy to estimate, and uh, you'll be able to complete it within your two week sprint. <clears throat> the final one there says testable. Your user story must be written in such a way that it can be tested. Because how else will you know that you've completed the job that you've been asked to do? It has to be tested. When we get to the acceptance criteria, you will see what we mean by this. So you write, for example, you say gain access into the house, right? Uh, if that's your user story, gain access into the house. How would we know that you've gained access into the house? We'll be, we should be able to test it, isn't it? So there'll be some steps um, that will be there that can help us confirm that this person has actually was gained access into the house. Hold on to that example. I'll see how we can flip it and make it a user story as we, we go on <clears throat> in the session. <clears throat> now, we're getting down to it. The format of a user story. Now, in most places, this is what you will see. In some other places, they will be written as um, sentences, okay? But in most places, you will see this format for a user story. So it's essentially as a, I want so that, okay? As a, I want so that. So the as a, what does that mean? It, it, it's just defining the type of user as a, maybe bricklayer. I want maybe to... 
to lay bricks so that uh, I can get the structure of the house or of my house up or something like that. You know, I've just given a random example. But what we're saying is the first line defines the kind the type of user it specifies as a what? The bricklayer, as a what? As a shopper, an online shopper, as a what? As a um, a a um, a receptionist as a, it defines the kind of user remember we said these user stories are what they are user focused they are user based they are centered on they are user centered so we want to know the type of user so as uh whatever the second line it talks about the goal that you need to achieve okay and remember we talked about user stories adding value this is how you see the value with the sec with the third line so that, so that's the end result. I want to do this so that I can achieve that. Okay, so that shows you the value that the end user is going to have once these steps have been followed or, or once that functionality has been created. Okay, so as uh, I want so that, okay. <clears throat> So this is a simple, very, very simple example of a user story. As an online shopper, I want to view a list of products so that I can select some items to purchase. So what can we see here? The first line has defined the type of um, user. Who's the user? The user is an online shopper. What is the goal? I want to be able to view a list of products. Why do I want to do that? Okay, that last line is always to answer the why. And when you can answer the why, it gives it, it defines the value that can be added, you know, to the end user. <clears throat> why do I want to view a list of products? So that I can select some items to purchase. Okay, hope we're understanding that so far. So this is a simple layout. To be honest, user stories are simple. Once you've understood what the, the business wants or what the user wants, <clears throat> now, remember, going back to the start, we said we've got epics, features, and user stories. Okay, there's something that I should have mentioned. The features in themselves can be broken down into user stories, right? So the epic is like the biggest, it's high up in the hierarchy, it can be broken down into a number of features. Now, the features themselves can be broke, further broken down into user stories, okay? Now, caveat, please. Let me put this warning. Oh no, it's not even a warning. It's a, yeah, a warning. It's just yeah. Let's say caveat, right? It's just for your awareness. Now we've said <clears throat> epics can be broken down into features, and features can be broken down into user stories, right? Please note that this there's no hard and fast rule. It depends on the organization that you're working for. Some organizations just have epics. Some don't have features. From the epics, they have their user stories. I was working on a project last year and there are no features. We just have the epics and the user stories. Okay. You can be working on another project and you have epic feature user stories. However, the um, structure is you have to adapt. Like when you start working with whatever the organization, I mean, it, it, there's no hard and fast rule, right? It all depends on what everyone on the team has agreed as their way of working. But essentially and basically, epics are broken down into features and features into user stories. Okay. Uh, I think the next page it will show you a good example of how this might not always be the case. So let's review what we have on our page um, on the screen just now. What does this epic say? <clears throat> Develop a website for Blue Sky Citadel. Okay. Now when you're thinking about it, this is how it happens in real life. When you're talking about epics, features, and user stories. Now, they've come to tell you, your, your product owner has come to tell you that, I'd like you, please pay attention because some of you will be speaking to your product owners at some point, or some of you might have even spoken to them. But these are this, this is how you break down the information that you receive, okay? Now, your product owner comes to tell you, I would like you, your team, to develop a website for Blue Sky Citadel. The questions that you should be asking, what are the features that you want? You know, like, what do you want um, on the website? Develop a website for Blue Sky Citadel. It's quite vague, isn't it? And that's why it's an epic. 
So do we now understand what an epic is? And that's why we said it's high level, really high level. Develop a website. Yeah, anybody can say that, but we all know that it takes a lot to develop a website. So you now start breaking it down, you know. Next level. What are the components of uh, the we a website? We all know that you've got like, if you look at any website, you get on the landing page, what do you see? You see, <clears throat> in fact, the landing page is, is even a starter. You want to ask yourself, what are the different aspects that will form a website? Here in front of you, you can see they've identified two aspects that there'll be a landing page, right? Because every website we have, when you say www dot whatever, 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 and you hit enter, you will end up on a, a page that we call the landing page page or, or home page whichever you choose to call it right and then um this other uh, 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 um feature it says authentication now this has to do with um, like websites where they say you need to sign in to get full access you know and you need to put in uh, what you, you need to put in your passwords um so you either log in if you signed in, um, up before or you sign up if you're a new user and then you have a password so all those have to do with the authentication the landing page has, on the landing page, you will see things like your header. You see things like your footer, okay? So again, this epic, develop a website for Blue Sky Citadel, has been broken down into uh, two features. There are more features. This is just for the sake of um, uh, giving examples, okay? It has been broken down into two features, landing page and authentication. They, in turn, have been broken down into three user stories each, all right? Landing page has been broken down into the first one, create the landing page. Well, the developers will have to even create the landing page first. And then you now start asking, what do we want on the landing page? We want a header, we want a footer, we want a, the main body, what kind of pictures do we want on it, and all that kind of thing. Now, under authentication, we have things like sign up, login, password, and there's a whole world of things that can be done with all that. So, do we understand? Epic, this Epic has been broken down into two features and the features have been further broken down into three user stories each, okay? <clears throat> this is another example. This is another example. And this in this example, you will see the level of detail or gra granularity is different. So if you see this one, the Epic was broken down into the landing page and authentication, isn't it? But here... This epic has been broken down into what? Header and footer menu. I'll take you back again. Can you see where header and footer menu was on this first um, example? Header and footer menu is showing as your user story here. Okay. And in this second example, header and footer menu is showing as your feature. These, it all depends on the size of your project and what you've all agreed to do. So what has happened here is that these, the person that wrote this um, epic feature and um user stories has just gone straight for it like we're focusing on the header because the header has different things you know we're focusing on the um, footer menu because it's got different things underneath so in this example the epic creates a landing page oh sorry that's not even create a website it's a landing page right this is second this is the second i take that back okay um this one this one was for developing a website so this is a totally different example the epic here is creating a landing page for the Blue Sky website. Okay, so this was what I was trying to explain. The epic here is to create a landing page, but on this um, um example, landing page is uh, creating a landing page is a user story. Do you get what I mean? So it depends on how big your project is. So that is why you shouldn't really be comparing. Like, so if we're working on two different projects, you know, for for one person. This might be their arrangement, you know. And for another person, this might be their arrangement. As far as you're able to convey the the user requirements or the business requirements in a way that the development team can understand, you're fine. So in this example, we have create a landing page for the Blue Sky website. And the, the, it has been broken down into two features, header menu and footer menu. The header menu and footer menu has not been further broken down. You see that here, it shows the components of the header menu, your logo, your home, all these are things you see on your header menu, isn't it? Your, the logo of that page, the home, home button, sign up, login, search about us. Your footer, the usual, 
contact or contact us, privacy policy, FAQs. You may have your social media um, icons there as well. Okay. Now, this is an example of a user story for sign up. If you look back again, remember we said one of the user stories under this feature is sign up. Under the header menu, we had logo, home, sign up, login, search, and about us. So we want to see an example user story for sign up. Now, do you notice that we said epic feature and backlog item? I don't know if you noticed that. So what, what it means is that your user story can also be referred to as a backlog item. Okay? As a product backlog item. Why is that? Because it's put in your product backlog. Okay? Now, example story. Example user story for sign up. As a new user, I want to sign up by creating a username and password so that the system can remember me and my data. Another example, as a newly registered user, I want to receive an email confirmation when I register so that I will know that the registration process is complete. So can we see the, as a, uh, I want, so that, hmm? as a, uh, I want, so that, right? And that's the format it follows. So at this point, I'm going to kind of stop and see if we can get people to volunteer and give us example user stories. Just think of think of any scenario. In fact, let me use a scenario. So I gave a scenario of um the house. Let me let me create my own user story from maybe gaining entry into a house. Okay. Gaining entry into a house. I can say as a homeowner, right? As a homeowner, I want to I want to um I want to let me see now as a homeowner I want to turn the keys in the um keyhole so that I can get into or so I can get access into my house. I don't even know if that's a good example. I'm trying to create an example for um Oladile, just a second. I can see that you've raised your hand. I'm trying to see if you have a good example. Um I don't want to say I want to open my house or I want to open the door so that I can get. I mean, you can actually use that as a homeowner. I want to, I want to open the door to my house so that I can get access into my home. Okay, so that's a, a simple example. Oladele Joseph, your hand is up. Um, go on. Yeah, I have an I have an example as well. Okay, carry on. So, as a student. Mm -hmm. I want to get a library card mm -hmm. so I can access the books in the library. Brilliant. Well done. Yeah, that's really, really good. So you've clearly stated um, the end result. The end result. Okay, so we've got a number of hands, and that's good. Uh, we've got Adekunle and Vine. Okay, so Adekunle, you go first, and then Vine next. Okay. As a new driver, I want to get a new car so that I can make more money. As a, as a what? As a new driver. Mm -hmm. I want to get a new car mm -hmm. so that I can make more money. Okay, so that's a good attempt, but I'm kind of confused as in because you said as a new driver, right? So we don't know what kind of... I don't think you've, as, you've defined okay, let's the say kind as of... As a driver. As okay, a driver. As, or do you want to say like as an Uber driver or something? Because when you say money, you want to make more money, right? Because yeah. when you say as a new driver, you want to get a new car. I'm thinking maybe so that I can go from point A to point B or so that I can drive to work or so that I can get to work in time or something. So when you say raise, uh, make money, I suppose you know what you're saying. You know, you get but I'm saying that it's yeah. not that clear to me. So okay. maybe try try and um, change something. Reframe it. Yeah, reframe it, please. Let's, let's hear. Mm. Okay, let's say, I can say as a driver, mm -hmm. I want to get a new car mm -hmm. to ease... Thank you. Uh -huh, to My movements. Thank you very much. Yeah. Well done. Um, definitely. Okay. So we've got Vine. <clears throat> Oladele, do you have a second example? Or because, okay, you know what I'll do? I'll take the other people and then we'll come to you. So Adikule just answered. So you can, um, you can mute now. So we'll go with Vine. Oh, wow. We've got lots of people wanting to show us their user story skills. Okay. Just a second. Let me see who we've got here. So <clears throat> Vine. Um, Bukumi, 
Ade Oluwa, Chiamaka. Oh, we've got quite a few people. Okay, so Vine, go for it. Let's take it one by one. Okay, my example will be as a bank customer, mm -hmm. I want to insert my eight my card into the ATM machine so I can withdraw cash. Thank you very much. That's a really good one. Um who's next? So that was Vine just now, isn't it? Okay. Um, yes. And adequately, you've you've um given your example. So if you can put your hand down, just so I can see the the thingy moving. Um. Okay. Next will be Bukumi. Yeah. Uh, as an artisan, I want to be mm -hmm. able to meet uh, more people who are in need of my services. Okay, so you haven't, you've given us two sentences. We need three. So you see? Okay. Yeah, so, th so think about it again, okay? So as an artisan, I want, I want to, to be able to meet more people who are in need of my service. So that... Uh, do, you get, do you get what I mean now? It has okay. to be three, three sentences. So maybe as an artisan, I want to... Um, join uh some some platform so that I can meet new people. Mm -hmm. Or I want to um um what's that word now? Um, extend. No, no, no. Okay. What's the word? My platform so I can meet. But your from what okay. you're saying, your the outcome is that you want to meet more people, isn't it? Yes. Okay. So what what do you need to do for you to meet more people? Uh, what's the word? Like game of visibility. Okay, so as uh as an artisan, I want to gain more visibility. Is that online yeah. or something? Yes, yeah, online. Yeah. So as an artisan, I want to maybe expand my visit online visibility. Or, visibility. Yeah, yeah, so that I can meet socialize. more. Uh, okay. what, sorry, what was the word? Who said that? Socialize. Socialize. Oh, okay, yeah. It might be that you want to socialize or expand your platform or okay. yeah, online presence. Gain online mm -hmm. presence so that you can meet more. So do you get yeah, what people. I mean? So you, yes. you you had already put everything in one sentence, but you have to break it down into three. So sometimes when you're it's a good thing that we're training it out here because you're going to put it into practice. So when you're writing your user stories, you might find that you've already talked, you've thought about the end goal, you know. So when you write it, just put the so what I do is I put it as a, I want so that it doesn't matter the order I think of it. So I already it's really easy to know who the the kind of user is that's usually the easiest one now sometimes you might not even be you might not have thought about how you will achieve that goal but you know the goal so go ahead put the goal and then have a think you see how we did it just now you we put the goal and then we had had, had um a thought about how um we thought about how to achieve that goal right so chiamaka on you go and you can put your hand down now thank you chiamaka please Okay, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, so um let's say for example, as a janitor, mm -hmm. I want to create a website mm -hmm. so that I can reach out to many more people about my job kind of thing I do. That that's good. But AJ uh, Maka, yeah. this one, yeah, a funky janitor, yeah. as in janitor that wants to <laughs> That wants to go online. <laughs> okay, but yeah, that was a good one. So you've stated the end um goal and how you want to achieve it. So well done, Chemaka. And um, you can now put your hand down. Yeah, uh, I want to say that as a poultry farm manager, I want to mm -hmm. I want to automate my production process so that I can minimize the time. And also boost my productivity. Well done, well done. That's so um, sounds so professional. Is this something that you do already? <laughs> That's my food. <laughs> All right, okay. Thank you for that example. You can put your hand down now. Um, I've got a day. Uh, yeah. On you go. Um, I've got someone's name spelled as. A D E E G B E A D E B. Yeah, A D E B. Yeah. Um, okay. All as right. As a student, I want to study hard mm -hmm. so that I can get a good grade. Well done. That's very straightforward. So you know your end goal. 
to achieve that end goal, you want to put in a certain, like there are certain steps that you need to take. That's very clear. Thank you. I agree. All right. And you can put your hand down now. Michael? Yeah. Okay. I can say, yeah. as a photographer, mm -hmm. and a new lens so that I can attract more customers. Okay, so what did you say? What was your second line? You say as a photographer, uh -huh. photographer I need a new lens so okay, that I can attract so, more right. customers. So you've captured everything, but do you know there's something that's missing in that your arrangement? Okay. Do, do, do you know what it is? No. Okay, so you said as a photographer, you need, okay, so you take the need out and pull want, okay? And that's all. Okay. It's perfect. So as a photographer, I want a new lens so that I can, yeah, you can do whatever, whatever you need to do. Okay. So that's, so instead of need, you put one. So we have to follow that format as a, I want so that, okay. Otherwise, everything else was perfect. Well done. Um, thank you for that, uh, Michael. I did great. Um, do you mind putting your hand down so that I can just know we can move along? Okay, the next person we have here is Fumi, and then we have Nike. Okay, so um, Fumi, please. Okay, thank you. As an estate surveyor, mm -hmm. I want to build more properties so mm -hmm. that I can expand my business. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So you stated the end goal and how you, you hope to achieve that end, end goal. Thank you for that. So that's clear. Okay, and finally, we have Nike. <clears throat> Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Yeah, thank you. So I'll be as a makeup artist. Okay. I want an iPhone. Okay. So that I can take good pictures. Well done. Yeah, that's it. So everybody has their own needs, their user needs, and how they want to achieve it. So again, that's a very good um, example. Um, thank you, Nikkei. You can put your hands down. And thank you, um, everyone that has given example. You see how broad, you see how useful user stories can be. You see how you can use user stories across different sectors of business, from the simplest task to the most complicated one. I mean, from our examples, we've had some really professional sounding ones. We've had some simple ones. I haven't made an example of even just turning your key to it get access into your your house okay so you can see how a um, user stories can be yeah um so some people are commenting on the okay on the group right so invest <laughs> cut before <laughs> right as a bag maker i want to create bags that elevate people's style right so marin Jotty, you said as a bag maker, I want to create bags that elevate people's style. You've just you've made a sentence, right? But you haven't split it into as uh I want so that. So can you think about that again and maybe um type the think about it? Your end okay, I think elevating people's style is your end result, isn't it? Marin Jotti. You can um, unmute and answer me. I don't, let's see. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so how do you think we can change that? Everything is in there. We just need to, to kind of tweak it a bit. Okay. Let me. Okay. Let me let you have a go and then. Okay. Everything is in okay. there. You've already said. So you see the easiest way to do. It. You've already said as a bag maker. So that's the first statement. It's fine. It's there. I believe that your end goal is to elevate people's style, isn't it? Yes, yes. Right. So put that as your last um, line. So okay, as a bag be... maker, uh -huh. I, want, I want to make bags so mm -hmm. that I can mm -hmm. elevate people's, elevate people's style. style. Exactly. Well done. So I, I, I believe we're not getting a good sense of how this thing works. So Ola Dede, Joseph, you said, as a business owner, so can that person mute, please? As a business owner, I want to run ads so I can get more customers. Perfect. Uh, oh, the only thing, just put so that, okay? Because you might find yourself in a team where they are quiet. They are... Sorry, who is the um, Hold on. Just a second. Right. Okay. Before I cut the person, the person. Ah. 
um, who's that now, please? Please only follow the strictly, follow the, the format um, strictly because you can be in a team where they're quite particular about the way the user story should be written. In my current project, um, <laughs> we're only working on epics, right? But our epics, as in we still use the format for user stories. Now, where I'm going is that they're quite specific. You can't leave anything out. So you'll be as a, I want so that, it, as in everything is even so prescriptive in the project I'm working on that you cannot leave, there are certain words you can use, there are certain words you cannot use. But my point is, at the very basic, uh, at, at the very, I mean, at the lowest level of things, please stick to that format, okay? As a, I want so that. Okay, Rose said, as a school proprietress, I want to automate our registration process so that our students can have a seamless registration process well done rose i like that yeah as um, olainka said as a graduate i want to upskill so that i can get a lucrative job in a competitive market and uh, let me note something so that's also a really good one but please um when you're doing your user service break them into three lines okay so olainka everything you said there is fine but what you should do like if you're writing it in a uh, um, Going forward, like in when you start working on your pro uh, project, you do as a graduate on one line, and I want to upskill on another line so that I can get a lucrative job blah, 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 on another line. Do you get? Okay, so we've done as a bag mate. Okay, so we've pretty much covered all the comments and the examples of user stories. Thank you so much, everybody, for um interact it was quite interactive and um, for answering and you know by actually putting yourself forward and doing it it helps you know what you're doing remember uh, and then as they say practice make makes uh perfect as b is you cannot really be hiding you can't hide if you're the kind of person that doesn't like to talk then this is not the <laughs> profession for you like you must be seen you must be heard you understand so well done to everyone that's um, gave examples as in that's the way to go because uh, you can make your mistakes here and you'll be corrected so i put another example for logging but i'm not even going to waste our time <laughs> going through it because we've given so many good examples right I, i'll just read the second one as a registered user i want to occasionally change my password so that i can keep it secure so we have some other ones here but we've got more than enough examples from what um we just from the interaction we just had okay so moving on <clears throat> acceptance criteria remember and uh, when i put the outline i said we'll talk about epics features user stories and acceptance criteria before i go further i must mention that your user story is not complete without your acceptance criteria i'll say it again your user story is not complete without your acceptance criteria if you see a user story and there's no acceptance criteria that is just a wish. It is not a complete user story. Okay. And I will explain why. Now, what's, what do we mean by acceptance criteria? These are the conditions that a software product must meet in order to be accepted by a user, a customer, or other systems. It also forms the basis for the acceptance testing stage. Do you remember when we talked about the user story being testable? Do you remember that when we talk about invest, um, the T there, uh, what does it mean? Testable, right? And now we are seeing testing. So do you now see how it links up? Without the acceptance criteria, you cannot even test the user story because the user story on its own is just like a wish, but it's not complete without the acceptance criteria. The acceptance criteria is what forms the basis for acceptance testing you've heard of you might have heard of user acceptance testing you may have heard of testing all these are done based on the acceptance criteria now acceptance criteria can also be defined as um, the predefined requirements that must be met taking all possible scenarios into account to consider a user story to be finished what does this mean everybody has a, a, a agreed that before you will say the user story is complete, you must be able to do certain things. Now, when do I go back to, I'm trying to remember some of the examples you gave. Hmm. 
<laughs> you know what? We're going to find out. We're going to see in the um um the next page or so um next two or so pages. We'll see examples. But what this means is that there are some requirements. If we cannot meet those requirements, then the story is not complete. So when we are writing up our user stories, we'll back them up by acceptance criteria. These are the steps or the conditions that must be met before we can say, oh, this user story has been completely done. Okay? I'll tell you what this means. Or rather, I've told you, but I will show you what it means. Before I show you the format, another way of describing the acceptance criteria that might help you understand it is... They could be written um they could be written as a set of statements, as a list of pass or fail or yes or no statements that will mark the functionality as complete. So there are different there are, will I say there's a, a format for acceptance criteria that is quite popular. This one. And it's called the Gherkin syntax. If you see at the bottom of the page, but um it's called the Gherkin syntax. Now, acceptance criteria they are often expressed in this format. The Gherkin syntax. Again, like your user story, we said what? As uh, I want so that now for your acceptance criteria, we have three statements given, when, then. Okay? Given is the precondition. That means it explains the scenario. When it states the action that will be done, and the then it shows the result. Okay? I'll take it again. Given when then. And this format is called the Gherkin syntax. Given explains the scenario when it describes the action that will be completed. And then shows the result as a result. Uh, result. That's what happens because of that action that has been taken. Okay. Now you can use that format or you can write your acceptance criteria as a set of statements. Like a checklist even. Okay, does it, do, imagine like an electrician going and um, doing like um, checks, right? The house, like um, can, the, can, can when you switch on the lights, so just imagine, uh -huh, imagine that the user story was installation of light bulbs in the house, okay? The acceptance criteria can just be a set of lists. When I turn on the, what do you say, light switch, when I turn, <laughs> lights go on when I, <laughs> English language can be had. Lights go on when I uh, press the switch and there might be a tick box, you know. Um, lights do not flicker, another tick box, you know. Um, all rooms are lit, you know. I've just told you three, three statements and they're kind of like a, a checklist, right? Now, if you meet all those three, it means that what? You've successfully what? Installed lighting in the house. So are we getting how the acceptance criteria forms the basis of testing? It's like a checklist. However, that checklist can be written in this formal format, the Gherkin syntax, or just as a set of statements, like a tick box. But please note, this is the more popular one, right? And most of you go, you will see the giving when then. Okay. <clears throat> Remember that we said that the user stories are not complete without the acceptance criteria. So I've given an example of a user story backed with uh, the acceptance criteria. Now let's read it together. As a new user, I want to register by creating a new username and password so that the system can remember me and my data. Acceptance criteria. Given I am a new user, Please scratch that, that, right? Don't say given that. Given I am a new user and I navigate to the sign up page, when I enter my username and password, then I am successfully registered and able to log in with my chosen credential. Now, when you look at this whole scenario play, playing out, what's the end goal? We want to register. Isn't it? You want to create a username and password so that the system can remember. We're talking about a new user. You just got on that platform. You just go on that platform. You want to, let me see uh, what message is here. Okay, well, that's fine. Right. So you just got on a new platform and you pro you, you're being prompted to sign up or to register. What would you have to do? You have to create a new username and a password. And then what will happen? 
you will save it and the system can save that data so that next time when you come in you can enter in your username and password the system can remember you you can log into that platform isn't it now how do we know that you have successfully registered these are now the steps do we not see it so this is this this sets out the scene right giving i um, a new user what's the kind of uh what's the hold on let's go back and see what this says what's the scenario who's using the system it's a new user the person is new to that platform okay um and i navigate to the sign up page when i enter my username and password then i am successfully registered and able to log in with my chosen credentials before i explain the fact that we are seeing four, four lines instead of three let me explain something else now when you want to test this uh so if the developer now goes and says oh we have enabled this platform, this website, so new users can register, they cannot create their username and password. Would you just take their word for it and say, oh yes, thank you very much? You have to test it, isn't it? And then even if you are trying to, if you are working for a business, say you are in a, a, a project team and you're working for a client, how will you show that you have delivered value? You must be able to tick this uh, acceptance question or else how do we know that you've completed the project are they going to just take your word for it no this is your proof that the work has been done so if we want to test it so the developers come and say oh we've enabled everything we've developed that functionality you can create a new username and password the system can remember your data like, okay that's all good thank you we're now going to do what our uh, user acceptance testing we're just going to do the testing what do you go what do you do you go on the platform as a new user. You go to the sign-up page. So what's going to happen? Remember we said the acceptance criteria will form the basis for what? Testing. So what I would do is, line one says what? Giving I'm a new user. Am I a new user? Yes, because I've never ever used that platform before. I'll put a tick there. That's fine. Pass. And I navigate to the sign-up page. What will I do? I will go to the Maybe I'm already on the landing page or the home page. I'll click on sign up, right? When I click on sign up, I will expect that something will happen. That I'll be taken to the sign up page, isn't it? If I'm taken to the sign up page, that is a pass. I'll put a pass there, a tick. Next, when I enter my username and password, what will I do? I'll enter my username and enter my password and I'll probably click save or enter. And then maybe I'll get a message to say, um, um, you have now successfully registered. Okay, what is, what would I do? I would tick that bit as well. All right. If I come back and I'm able to use those details to log in, that's another tick tick. I don't know why your hand is up. <clears throat> yes, yep. yes. Uh, please. I just wanted to confirm, yeah, because mm -hmm. the acceptance criteria is meant to be like uh, the other one is meant to be like given that when and then but now i can see and hi yes that that's good that you noticed that remember that i mentioned that i'm going to explain why there are four lines instead of three in fact this one can even be five lines do you notice that that last line it says then i am successfully registered and able to log in with my chosen credentials you notice that right um do you know i can even make that five lines and say then i am successfully registered then I'll put the, and I am able to log in with my credit. So I can put that under again. Now, let me explain that. So it's good if you ask that. I was going to get to it anyway, because I wanted to first show you how acceptance criteria can be the, from the basis for testing. Now, we have given when then, but some scenarios are longer than given when then. Okay. So you see this one, given that I'm a new user, and I navigate to the sign up page. Some people can say, given that I'm a new user, and I navigate to the sign up page, and I enter my username and I enter my password. When I click on enter, then I am successfully registered and I am able to log in with my chosen. Do you see that I've made it seven, seven steps already? Do you, can you see what, what I've just done? From four, I made it seven. Is that correct? That is perfectly fine. 
Where you put the hand, please, it does not matter. I don't know anybody tell you otherwise. It doesn't matter. So depending on your team that you're working in, um, some people are really very hung up on, oh, it has to be given when and 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 then, or given and 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 when then. Please believe me. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. We just want to see the number of steps, right? And like I did just now, I broke it down into seven steps to make it very simple. The simpler it is, the easier it is to just carry out the testing because you are not implying anything. So I will say, I'll read that again. Here we have four steps. Um, I don't know why your hand is up. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to really understand it. Mm -hmm. So when we are writing the accept acceptance criteria, yep. that means that we don't really necessarily need to follow the, the given that the, the given when, when then. can be in the sentences, but we can actually create hours as well. And yeah, but they will be at the start too. You understand? They they will always be giving. There'll be a when, there'll be a then. Do you get what I mean? The, it, what I'm saying is that you can put the and wherever and you might have lots of ands. Do, oh. do you get what I mean? Yes. Okay. So I, I think the next page has a good, a better example. So what I'm trying to explain, I think I have just a second, okay. And what I'm trying to explain is that the more the steps even, as in the more simple it is, you know, the easier it is to uh, carry out the testing and you're not implying anything. So if I say, given that I'm a new user and I navigate to the sign up page and I enter my username and I enter my password, when I click on the submit button, <coughs> then I am successfully registered and I am able to log in with my chosen credentials. Do you understand? So I've made it so many steps, but it's straightforward. You now know all the steps. You say, enter username, you tick. Enter password, you tick. Do you get? Or um, navigate to sign up page, okay? Enter username, okay? Enter password, okay? Click on submit, okay? You know, it makes it simpler. Adekunle, your hand is up. All right. <coughs> Thank you very much. I... At the beginning, when we actually started, I couldn't connect just because my network was um, misbehaving. But later, I joined him between and I was able to follow up. But I want to ask, the user story, who is writing it? Okay. So, like you said, you missed the start of it, isn't it? So, you probably need yeah. to listen to the recording. But, yeah, um, the user story is the business analyst that writes it. Okay. But you write it from the perspective of a user. Okay? So... I'm the one writing it. You are the one writing it, okay? Yeah. But you'll be saying, as uh, I want to, you own it like it's your own, um, like you're the end user. Okay, the end user are the users now. And the user is the end user, yeah. yeah. All right. so, so, you know, like if you're developing software and everything, right? There are going to be a number of people <coughs> that will use that software. For yes. example, when we said develop a, a, a soft, um, uh, uh, Blue Sky Citadel um, website, they are definitely going to be a target audience, isn't it? Yes. Or if you are in um, an organization and your project is to develop uh, a software solution, maybe when if somebody mentioned something about payments, maybe a payment um, solution or a payment platform or whatever, yeah. There are going to be some people, there's going to be at least be a team or a department that will use that payment software, isn't it? Yes. Those are your end users. Now, oh. when you are going as a business analyst, who are you going to be speaking to? Who do we call stakeholders? They are the end users, they are the people yes. that are affected. Stakeholders, you know, they include like and people that are going to be using your uh, using that same. Uh, Whatever new thing you're creating, if it's a new yeah. system, if it's a website, whatever it is, there are people that will be using it. They'll be directly impacted by it. Those are the people you'll be speaking to. What are your pain points? What would you like? Maybe they, they have a very old system. Uh, what are your frustrations here? Oh, when we click on enter, the thing will be showing us this washing machine thing, and it takes like um um one minute to upload anything. It's really slow. It's slow and painful, blah, blah, blah. And you are coming to say, oh, we have a new solution that we can, um, you know, develop for you. Once you click it in two seconds, it's taking you to the payment screen. You can enter your details, blah, 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 blah. You are advocating for the user. 
Okay, so you yeah. now realize that okay, the user wants a system that will respond very quickly. When you go to your your team, you'll be speaking to the developers, happy your develop develop developers and your IT people, and you're like. Okay, they want a system that does this, this, and that. They want something that looks really sharp and neat, you know, something that meets all their requirements. So you are advocating for the user. So when you're writing the user story, you're writing as if you are the one that's going to use it. No, right. Does that answer your question? Thank you very much. I got it. Okay, no worries. So another example here. Um, so I definitely you can I mean, put your hand down, please, so that I know that. Okay, thank you. So as a registered user, I want to log in with my username and password so that the system can authenticate me and I can trust it. Now, these are the steps we're putting, we've put here. Again, you can see the giving when then, right? But there are lots of ands in between. The ands might come after or wherever, but you can see that essentially you have the giving when then, okay? Just note that. Given I am a registered user, and logged out again let me let me remind you guys take that that out okay please i just don't want to take us back and um, by stop uh, stopping um by stopping my share my screen share um don't say giving that just say giving i am a okay giving i am a whatever whatever okay don't you don't say giving that please remove the that um, it's something that I should have updated. Apologies for that. Um, so given I am a registered user and logged out, and I navigate to the login page, and I, so let's follow the story. This person wants to be able to log in with their username and password so that they can be authenticated by the system, isn't it? Now note, what's the kind of user? A registered user. That means they've already done this step that we said before. Do you get? They've already come in as a new user, they've already registered, created their username and password, okay? And that functionality is working. Now I'm returning to the website or to the platform or to the solution or to the system. I want to log in with that, my username and password that I saved. And I want to check that the system has remembered it, okay? So as a registered user, registered. So I'm not a new user anymore, I'm registered. So the system should have my details. I want to log in with my username and password so that the system can authenticate me. Now, acceptance criteria, given that I am a registered user and logged out. So if you are doing the testing, what would you do? Given that I'm a registered user, the question is, am I a registered user? Yes. Am I logged out at the moment? Yes. Okay, and I navigate to the login page. I click on login, All right? I enter my username and I enter an incorrect password. Okay, when I click on login, so I already know my password, but I want to check that everything is working as it should because that's what we call happy path. Okay, and sad path. So the this is the other, this is not a happy path. This is us intentionally putting wrong information to test whether the system will react as it should. Okay, so I enter my correct username and I enter an incorrect password. When I click on login, then the login fails and an error message. Uh, appears stating that the username or password is incorrect. So that's what you would expect the system to do, isn't it? Think about it in everyday life. When you go on a platform that you have already registered with and you put in uh, your email address and you put in your password, if, for example, you make a mistake while putting your password, what will it do? Will it log you in? No. It will come up with an error message to say maybe password or you a uh, email or password incorrect you, you know you, we've seen that haven't we so that's what you would expect that if you put something wrong it should kick out it should not give you an expected result another example as an online shopper i want to view a list of products so that i can select some items to purchase acceptance criteria on clicking product list the product list opens up in a new tab so this is an example. This is an example. Remember, um, we said the acceptance criteria can just be a set of statements. Remember, let me show you. <coughs> um, somebody is unmuted. So remember, we said here it could be a written. It could be written as a set of statements, right? A list of pass or fail or yes or no statements that will mark the functionality as complete. Okay. So look at that now. 
this is this example. You notice that this is not showing saying giving when then. I'm just showing you the different ways you can write your acceptance uh, criteria. However, please note, you would, for the uh, duration of your project, use the Gherkin syntax, which is the giving when then, okay? I'm just showing us how some organizations can choose to have st set of statements. As an online shopper, I want to view a list of products so that I can select some items to purchase. So acceptance criteria. On clicking product list, the product list opens up in a new tab. If that happens, what would you do? You click. You are testing it, right? If that happens, what would you do? You click. You take it as passed. Different product categories are listed. If that happens, you take it as passed. On selecting a category, specific related products are displayed. If that happens, you take it. On selecting a product, there is the option to add to basket. Does that happen? If so, take it. On clicking add to basket, the selected product is moved to the basket. Again, if that's the response you get, that means everything has happened as you expect. And you can say the user story is complete. Okay. All right. So that is as far as we are going with this. And we will quickly now... um. We'll quickly now go to like a, a demonstration. But before, Adelua, is that an old hand or is that new? Yes. Your hand is new. It's new. Okay, that's fine. What's your question? Okay, so um, for example, now a, a developer, sorry, um, yeah. a, a, a user, no, not user, somebody that wants to create a website, yeah? comes and says, oh, we want to create this particular uh, product. Um, are we going to write user stories and acceptance criteria for every section on that website? Right. So where everything starts is um, having an understanding of what the uh, of what the client wants, sorry, and what the client wants. So you're going to be discussing with your product owner. First of all, have you guys discussed, uh, have you, have any of the teams spoken with uh, the product owners? Yes, we have. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, we have. Okay. Yes, we have. Have. okay. I know that for the teams that I'm, uh, I'm a product owner for one team, so I think we're having a meeting tomorrow and it's very extensive and important. Okay, so you'll be asking yourself, you want a website. What are the different parts uh, or components of a website? Okay, you want to break it down. You know, some people can just say, I, I want a website. I want the website is not good enough. Like, what are the colors you want? How do you want things to be laid out? How do, do you get as in there are specific things you can ask that will help you when you're writing your, your user stories? And guess what? Sometimes you may miss certain things and then um, you may miss certain things and you're having refinement and it might be the developers that spot it. Oh, in order to do this, we need to do this. In order to do that, we need to enable that. Okay. So the simple answer to your question is that, yes, you will have to write um, a user story for every, you know, scenario component of the, every section of that website. That's why the job we do is important. Okay. Because you need uh, an audit trail, you need to keep track of the work that has been done. You know, the, you need to keep track of where you have documented um, the uh, requirements and how the team has been able to achieve them all. Okay. Now, we had a volunteer. Um, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I'm looking for your name. Oh. Um. Yeah, that's Marine Doty. Thank you. So you have access to the um, Azure DevOps uh, board, right? Um, If you can go on there and share your screen, I will talk you through what you need to do. And then, you know, we can. Um, I just want to show you guys how you would use it on the board. You know, how you can create your user stories on the board. Because I think you had the session yesterday, if I remember correctly, um, on setting up your Azure and, and all that. But what I want you to, to show you, what I want to show you today is how to then populate the the board with your user stories, okay? Because all we've been doing is talking about the theory around it. But now let's put it into practice. All right, so... 
Um, do you want to share your... Do you have it up just now? Ella? Marin Doty, yeah. Do you, do you have it? Do you have uh, your Azure board open just now? Yes. Okay. Do you mind sharing your screen? Okay. See what comes. Which one? Which one should I click on? Click on the my, my practice because that's the name that you. This gave. one. Yeah, yeah just yeah. It's okay. If you click on that, what happens? Uh huh. Here we are. All right. So this is the fun part. Everybody, please pay attention. So let's see. So go to your left, right, and click on boards. So boards. Yeah. Just click. Um. Um. Say. Click on boards first. Just boards. Oh, okay. Yeah. Let's see next and all that. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you clicked on boards, right? Yeah, I click on board, yeah. Oh, that was a different layout just now. Go back and click on so there are two boards. Do you see that? Click on the first boards. The, okay. the Should I close board. it back here? Yeah, then I no no just go and click on this on the left. Don't worry, go to the left. The top one, one no, not that one, the one there's another board. See, go left, left, up oh. uh, that that one. Yes, yes, yes. That's what we want. Okay. So this is the layout, right? That you will find. Now, remember we said epics. In fact, let me do, let me do sort of like a quiz. What, how did we say, you know, um, the, the hierarchy is? You know, you just have to read the pictures. very... Pictures. Yeah. 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 Michael, your hand is up. Did you want to answer? People have already... Yeah, they've already answered, yeah. <laughs> they, they just... Yeah, uh, yeah. So that that's correct. So epic features and user stories, right? So on this board... Yeah, Marion, just that's correct. So on this board, you can see... um, If you look at the top of the board, right... He says work items recently updated, new work item, blah, blah, blah. Okay. We are interested in new work item. So do you want to, first of all, can you pronounce your name for me again? Is it Ad Adegbe? Adeshola. Ade is my first name. That's it's Adeshola. Yeah. Ade. So just call me Ade. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Ade. All right. So click on that new work item. First of all, click on the, so did you click on it or did you hover? I click on it. I click on drop. Okay. So guys, can you see what we're seeing here? We have epic, we have issue, and we have task. Now, let me explain something to us. This board has not been set up to align with what we just learned. You know, I said, depending on your organization and everything, in Blue Sky, what will happen is that you will have what epic feature and product backlog item. You also have tasks. The tasks are for like um, testers and all that, creating different tasks, like raising bugs and all that. Okay. But you see here, let's let's try and see. So click on the epic. Yeah, click on that one. Let's see. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't no leave it. Hold on, hold on. It doesn't um it doesn't give you the option to break it down to further because this is like a free one and we haven't set it up. But when your Scrum a master set up your your thingy, everything will be there, you know, epics, features, and oh gosh. Um right. So let's let's work with the epics for starters. I really would have wanted to show you how like 
you put your epics and you can reduce it to break it down to features and your user stories show you where to put your user stories your description and all that okay let's work with the epics you know what we might probably i will liaise with your um i will speak with you allow me uh rita your hand is up Rita, did you want to say something? Yes. Okay. I didn't I didn't have comments myself. I was I just wanted to suggest if you could use your home board to show us what we have to do in as much as I know you are. You yeah, are I don't I don't have access to my board anymore. In fact, it's been a while since I actually logged onto that board. Um right. on the project I'm working on. All. Yeah. yeah. So okay. I'm working on another project, but I have been away from Blue Sky for I think about six months. Yeah. So so I haven't got access to my board just now. But what yeah. I can do is I will reach out to allow me, right? And because what I want to show you, it wouldn't be more than 10, 15 minutes. Okay. So when I will reach out to her now. Epic. So what epic should we use now? Um, I gave us examples before. Let me just look for, let me go back and get um one of those back up. Um trying to come out of this. Um How do I come out of okay? Yeah, exit full screen. Right. Um, so one of the epics that we used was um, just a second. Right. Okay, develop a website for Blue Sky Citadel. So what you would do, so look, it's the same thing, it's essentially the same thing. You come in here and you put in all the, you kind of complete the fields, right? So you come in and you see the bit that says enter title. Click on that um, additional and say develop, what did I say just now? Um, develop a website for Blue Sky Citadel. Develop a website for Blue Sky Citadel. My my mouse is acting funny now. Okay, where is it? Okay. Oh, my mouse is acting up. Oh, I'm trying to come out of this page. How can I manually do that? Escape? Oh, oh okay. Yeah, got it. Mm. Okay, here we are. Right. So develop a website for Blue Sky Citadel. Okay. Um, if we wanted to treat this as a user story, do you know what you would do? Under the description, you will now put um as uh I want so that. But then again, this is an epic, isn't it? So we can't really use it for that. Oh okay. So I think we would open up for questions. Call it a day for today so that we make the best use of our time. And um, well, as soon as I get the go ahead, that you guys have access to the boards, we can do it. Michael, your hand is up. Yes, 